finishes with a heart line roll. The rider moves essentially in a straight line while at the same time rotating around an imaginary line approximately at the level of the heart. Here is the part of the drawing corresponding to the heart line. This line represents the track and the line with dots represents the heart line, which is also the line used for calculations of forces on the rider. In this case, we see that the shape of the track is not at all a straight line. The shape enables the train to move around the heart line of the riders. When the rider is in nearly uniform rectilinear motion, the sum of all forces acting on the rider must be close to zero, according to Newton's first law. So the force from the train essentially cancels the force of gravity. However, the experience of the body depends of course on the orientation. Riding in the heartline roll makes it very clear that our bodies are not point particles. The direction of the force from the train relative to the body changes throughout the rotation. In roller coaster context, vertical denotes the direction from the seat to the head of the rider and lateral means sideways. Positive lateral forces point to the left of the rider. So our own coordinate system rotates together with us. What is vertical and lateral for these two rabbits? So, now we know what to expect from an accelerometer measuring the forces acting on us as we ride. The vertical component should start at 1g, going through 0 as we are horizontal, and then to minus g as we are upside down, and then back to 0 and up to 1 again, a cosine function. The lateral forces we expect instead to be a negative sine function for a rotation starting to the left. Let's look at the measured data. This is the heartline roll. This graph also includes the expected sine and cosine functions. Hmm. The lateral component is not quite down to minus 1g. Take a look again at the motion of the rider at this point in the ride and try to figure out why.